We are going through the um, very important chapters of the Bible as chosen by a pastor, Gum. We've been doing these for, I think, eight years, on and off, each summer. And uh, kind of a neat look. This one is a shorter one, uh, Psalm 121. It's a good one for Confirmation Sunday. It's one that Luke does know by heart. We'll see what we have to say here. Let's wet your palate. Number one, Psalm 121 was sung by Jewish pilgrims who had traveled to Jerusalem for different festivals. True. It is a song of ascent. One of the song of ascents. And it was sung that way. And uh, they would just go and kind of, I don't know, as you're driving down the car to wherever you go, maybe to the beach, you bust out Psalm 121. Two, our God is all-powerful. True, good. Three, God can accomplish good in our lives through trouble. True, that's not really a fun true, but yes, as you look back in your life, it is true. Finally, our feelings can be wrong. True, remember that, Luke, as girls come calling in high school. Your feelings can be wrong. All right, Psalm 121. Psalm 121, a song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. This psalm uses expressions familiar in the East. For example, the statements about the sun and the moon. They refer to the many dangers that confront the traveler, day or night. Give examples of the physical dangers we encounter as we travel through life. How many of you have ever had to use AAA? Yeah. Car trouble is the number one in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Physical danger. There might be others. You might get sick in college, Luke. Yeah. Where you... You name it. Breaking a leg. Life's hard. These are minimal compared to the next one. Give examples of the spiritual dangers we encounter as we travel through life. I'll give you a hint. They don't always look like that. This sports leagues, uh, TV shows, the internet, Emails from friends, social media. Should I keep going? Yeah, there's all kinds of spiritual dangers in life. And these are far worse than any broken arm or any car problem. Any credit card debt you could ever imagine. Three, what special comfort does verse 2 offer as we encounter troubles or perils? Who is it that you call on for help? The Lord, the... Maker of heaven and earth. It is a small thing, Luke, to uh, fix your problem that you're going through. I will tell you that. In addition to his omnipotence, that means all-powerful, which of the Lord's characteristics are mentioned or implied in this psalm for our comfort? If somebody broke into the house, do you think I would wake up, Luke? Emmy thinks I would. Good, Emmy. Jenna, what do you think? <laughs> I take great comfort in this psalm knowing that my God neither slumbers nor sleeps. He watches over me and, more importantly, the rest of my family 24-7, no matter where life will take them. True. What else does he do? He is always with you. That's omnipresence. He's always watching, yeah. Do you think that, in general, your God is good? I think my God gets a bad rap when you watch the news sometimes, and he's blamed for all the heartache and trouble in the world. 
in general, God is good. Anyone who cre would create a flower, go to all the troubles to give my world such beauty, is a good God, besides of all the other things you know about him. Now he loves you. Five! And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. What good might God have in mind when he allows trouble or danger to enter our lives? What will God ultimately use trouble or danger to accomplish? When I saw Carl Hinshaw, he was suffering through intense pain. And for the past six months, he had been praying that God would call him home. I saw him on Wednesday. Roland saw him on Thursday. And he looked good. I mean, he, he, he was kind of frail, but he wasn't in pain. Hospice was doing a great job with that. And none of us had any clue that he had very advanced congestive heart failure. And so God answered his prayer and took him home in a wonderful way. That's, that's an awesome answer to his prayer. Verse 8 is often used in our churches during baptism or confirmation. Why is this a fitting verse for a time like that? Or to watch over your coming and going, going both now and forevermore. <coughs> Luke, you have to answer this one. Yes, that's true. And as confirmation goes, it is terrifying for your parents to watch their children drive or even go off by themselves or any of this. And so know this, that we love the comfort and the security that our God gives to all of our children as they leave. Seven, in times of trouble and danger, why is it so important to focus on the promises of God rather than our own feelings? God knows better than we do, yes. Have you ever thought that God's mad at you? Good, if you can answer no. Because the vast majority of the people that I talk to aren't sure. If you are secure in your faith and you have that comfort, dance a jig. I don't, I don't know. That is so rare. And it is the spirit-given joy that you have in your heart. That peace of knowing that God's always with you. Please say this prayer with me. Almighty Father, forgive my anxiety and fear. Give me courage to face the dangers and ordeals of everyday life, being certain of your care and protection. By your strong hand, deliver me from all my enemies. I bring this petition in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. May God give you all a blessed week.